neurological examination uh, is an equally important part for a spine examination without that you can't come to a final diagnosis uh let us understand if a patient's spine is able to walk and allowed to walk both are important able to walk and allowed to walk if the spine is unstable very tender don't make the patient walk if the patient is able to walk one may find out something about the deficit from the gait itself i'll show you few examples this patient this patient a patient of old spinal trauma has got a bilateral foot drop once it turns around you can see the telltale mark of the old spinal trauma showing a low dorsal deformity so if the patient is able to walk and allowed to walk similarly a patient who has got a cervical myelopathy has got a staggering gait he walks with a wide base gait you can see that and there is a hint of a stagger particularly when the patient turns around you see that yes that's right wide base gait staggering as if trying to catch his balance this is typical of a cervical myelopathy then a, a gait of a shared scoliosis is a very very guarded gait will give you an example will give you an indication that probably there is a acute disc prolapse i'll not go into the details but again repeat i'll just repeat if the patient is able to walk and allowed to walk now let us come to neurological examination in particular uh, at the end i mean uh, once we have conducted the examination we should be able to tell what type of deficit it is upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron what is the extent of deficit what is the level of neurological injury what is the correlation with bony lesion and what is the plane of compression whether it is extra dural intra dural or intra or intra medullary we should be able to answer all these questions once we have conducted the examination but of course it always follows a follows a particular pattern of uh, going through higher mental function cranial nerves motor system sensory system blood and bowel well higher mental function uh, higher mental functions and cranial nerves are not that important for a uh, for a pg who's going for a ortho exam but just make a small note of the thing whether the patient is well oriented in time space and place similarly in cranial nerves just observe observe to look for any uh, cranial nerve deficit i will not spend any time on this and let us come to the motor system the motor system i uh, please understand i have repeated in my last talk also a particular sequence is the most important thing if you follow this sequence which i am showing it to you you will not miss any point in the exam as for the motor system is concerned think uh, uh, talk about bulk tone power and flexes in that order well bulk of the muscle see feel and measure a uh, muscle basing may be very obvious feel a uh, flaccid muscle would be flabby while a spastic muscle will not be flabby and finally to confirm measure that and record where but what is the exact amount of muscle basing particularly if it is uh, particularly if it is asymmetrical and there is a difference between the two limbs so see feel and measure as far as the bulk of muscles is concerned well uh, talking about the the next is the tone of the muscles uh, please understand the tone of the muscles would be either be, if, it, if it is uh, involved it could be either either a, a let me stop the video it could either be a flaccid uh, paralysis in the case of lower motor neuron paralysis or it could be a hypertonic paralysis in case of uh, upper motor neuron paralysis well there are two methods to do it uh, most it is done by leg log rolling log rolling can be done either by rolling the rolling on the lower part of the thigh or better if it is on the shin that is one method of uh, testing for the for the amount of tension which is present in the muscles of the lower extremity other point is to move the limb through the range of movement and try to assess what is the basic tone of the muscles please remember that the increase in tone could either be a clasp knife type or a cogwheel type which are two co most common types what we are we and orthopedic patients more uh, in our orthopedic patients we deal mostly with the clasp knife rigidity this is an example of that we see the video once again as the examiner starts move, flexing the limb as there is as if a, there is an increase of resistance the examiner goes on flexing the knee and at a particular time the limb simply gives way please see it once again okay i'll say, i'll again repeat that as the examiner flexes the knee he feels as if the body is offering more resistance 
once he once he keeps on flexing at a particular point the limb gives way like in a clasp knife this occurs at uh, typical in the uh, typical typical in the patient which we see other i am now let's see see it once again please this is important so i'll spend a moment here yes that's right this is a typical clasp knife rigidity seen in the cases of orthopedic patients a cock bill type of rigidity is seen most in in extra pyramidal tract lesions uh, sorry i'm um, uh, pyramidal tract lesions which is not what we see normally there is a there is an increased resistance there is an increased tone then less tone increased tone like a cock bill well this, i mean once we have seen the tone we must comment about now about the muscle strength all of you must be knowing about this mrc grading i will not go into the details grade 0 is the complete paralysis and grade 5 is the normal power i am not going to repeat it this very well known must be very well known to all of you only thing i want to point out the common mistakes with the with the with the exam with the examinees doing the exam once you ask him to test a muscle power a demonstrate a muscle power and many times the the candidate simply puts the like supposing if he is asked to demonstrate the pulse power he puts his hand on the patient's lower part of the shin and asks him to extend the limb but please understand first make sure that the patient has got at least power 3 once you are demonstrated the patient has got power 3 only then you demonstrate the further grades it may happen that i mean you may be checking this way and uh, going straight away uh, giving the resistance which not be the which will not be the actual power first ensure that the patient has got a power 3 at least like in this like the this way checking for the quadriceps with the gravity eliminated see whether the patient is able to extend the knee and then go for grade 4 and grade 5 this is the common mistakes which the candidates do in the exam now the next step is uh, we have we have we have seen the bulk we have seen the tone we have talked about the power from 0 to 5 then we come to the reflexes now reflexes of two of two types one are the deep tendon reflexes and the superficial reflexes the deep tendon reflexes are the reflexes which are initiated by stimulating a stressed tendon a tendon is first stressed then stimulated which which produces a reflex action in that muscle now these are all the deep tendon reflexes which we are supposed to examine in the uh, which we are supposed to examine in the exam and uh, you have to memorize this particular table uh, these are the common common uh, common deep tendon reflexes which we are able to see in uh, must examine in the exam uh, must examine in the exam uh, you must remember the muscle which is acting the core segment and which is the peripheral nerve once you remember this table you will be able to realize that if a biceps is absent the most probably c5 is is involved that way now let me show you example of in the uh, for the slides uh, you may not be knowing that the reflexes can also be graded a grade 0 is absent reflex grade 1 is present like a normal ankle jerk grade 2 is brisk like a normal knee jerk grade 3 is very brisk and grade 4 is clonus now let me show you how to examine different uh, different reflexes this is the this is the a uh, reflex arc of a uh, uh, knee jerk this is the position in which the knee can be the knee the knee jerk can be examined now this is the example of a normal knee jerk the tendon is at a stretch and then the tendon is stroked now this is the example of a knee jerk with where there is hyperreflexia you can see the very obviously that the reflex is increased and is most likely a case of upper motor neuron paralysis the ankle jerk is examined in in any of these three ways uh, sometimes few examiners few examiners like to examine the prone position also but these are the different ways in which a ankle jerk can be examined uh, this is the example of a normal ankle jerk please note everything the way the examiner is doing the this is a normal ankle jerk this is a increased ankle reflex again upper motor neuron paralysis now this is how you see a biceps reflex the biceps tendon is not uh, no not stroked uh, directly the thumb uh, the thumbnail is put over the uh, put over the tendon and then it is stroked you can see the normal biceps and now see the increased biceps reflex
This is how the triceps reflex is examined. A normal triceps reflex. I increased triceps reflex. This is how a normal supinator reflex is checked. You see the contraction of the brachioradialis. This is how an increased supinator reflex would look like. Contraction of the brachioradialis. Now there is a small sign which is typical to cervical myelopathy patients. On flicking the distal, distal phalanx, there is involuntary flexion of the rest of the finger phalanxes. This is Hoffman's sign seen in cervical myelopathy. Now I was talking of grade four. Sometimes the petalic nose is there. This is this is this is the way the petalic petalic nose is checked. It is there is no petalic nose on this side. We see how petalic nose is checked. Ensure the petal is moving freely and then give a jerk. That this is the example of a actual petalic nose present. Grade four of muscle uh, muscle flex. Similarly, ankle cones can be checked in this way. Please see the position of the limb. Hip flexed, knee flexed, sudden jerk to the ankle and it causes, it is not so pronounced at this side, it was pronounced, more pronounced on the right side. Now, this, this, was, this was about uh, deep end reflexes. Now we are supposed to check about the superficial reflexes also. The superficial reflexes are so called because they are elicited by stroking a superficial structure like a skin or a cornea. Now these are the superficial reflexes which we are, which we are supposed to check in the exam. Starting from plantar, sandal, cremastic, bulbocavernous and abdominal. Again, the candidates are supposed to memorize this chart to know about the, which is the segment involved and which is the muscle which is involved. I will show you examples. These are the abdominal reflexes. Now there are, please see first. All the four quadrants of the abdomen are, are, are stimulated separately. And the, the abdominals are checked in, in that, uh, in that uh, seg, uh, uh, quadrant. Now there are two ways of doing it. This is the this is, uh, this is first way. This is the second way. In, I, in, uh, in all the four different quadrants, the, the stroke is given from outside to inwards. Now please see this uh, uh, video once, uh, once again. All four quadrants separately checked. Now we are talking of plantar reflexes, plantar reflex. This is the way the plantar aspect of the foot is to be stroked in this manner. This is a normal response when the toes flex. And this is a normal response when, the, when there is a, there, there is a dorsiflexion, of, dorsiflexion and uh, fanning of the toes. Now let, let us see. This is the normal response. This is a Babinski sign, which is a typical of upper motor neuron paralysis. Once it is present, there is no doubt about the presence of upper motor neuron paralysis. The, the next in the list is the cremastic reflex. Once you stroke the upper part of the thigh, the same side of the testicle moves up. This is again a superficial reflex. Now, please see this uh, video carefully, how to check for an uh, ankle wink. The perianal skin is stroked and it causes an involuntary contraction of the anal sphincter. Uh, there is one mistake in this video. The examiner is using a hypodermic needle, which should not be used. Use an all pin to stroke the perianal sensation. Otherwise, the method is correct. Now, bubble cavernous reflex with the, with the one, one finger inside the anus, the other hand stimulates the glans penis and the finger inside the rectum feels for the contraction of the bulbo cavernous as far as the male is concerned. The other hand feels for the contraction of the bulbo cavernous. In the females, it is used, it is done either by 
by pulling on the catheter or by pressing on the mons pubis while the one hand feels for pulling on the catheter and feeling for the contraction now the motor system is over i'll come to the sensory system uh, you have to memorize the different tracks of the sensory system i'll not go into details of these just for the sake of simplicity these are the different different uh, modalities in the sensation to be checked pain temperature touch and joint sensation proprioception vibration uh, pain and temperature are by the spinothalamic tracts half of the touch is also by spinothalamic tracts relative half is by the rest all are from the uh, from the dorsal tracts which are which are dealing mostly with the vibration position position sense and stereognosis now i'll make it simple i'll make it simpler for you to examine uh, the sensory system this is how you are these are you are supposed to examine all these modalities which i which i'll show you by example i'll not uh, uh, talk about this table i already i'll already simplified it you have to remember this dermatomes you must uh, at end of the examination you must be able to find out that which dermatome has affected only then you will have to decipher which is the level of the spinal cord injury or spinal cord insult now this is how you check check uh, i mean check the light touch either use the cotton in this manner the manner shown or even using a tip of the finger finger is also an internationally accepted method either of these two methods can be can be uh, can be applied now to check for the superficial pain use a ordinary all pin never use a hypodermic needle or there are special needle uh, pins which are available and you can check use these uh, use these pins to check for the superficial pain otherwise a simple all pin will suffice now two point i mean uh, the the previous which i have shown you is about the about the spinothalamic tract about the dorsal tracts these are these are the things which you have to be checked two point discrimination if you uh, remember you are uh, a uh, ug level uh, uh, neurology a uh, different parts of the body can discriminate between the two points at a certain distance a fingertip is able to discriminate at a very small distance while the back of the hand back of the back uh, i mean uh, back skin can uh, can differentiate by when it is a very large distance this is what i mean a fingertip will be able to distinguish a very small distance uh, while the back skin will be able to differentiate a very very large gap these are i mean uh, uh, criteria for the different areas of the body are given in the books one has to know them and then one can compare them in your patient if you know the normal a uh, position says uh, you must i mean you this is again a posterior column uh, column column sensation uh, one, one one wants to understand whether the patient is able to uh decipher the position of the joint or not uh, there are different steps shield the patient's eye explain the procedure to the patient first what do you mean by up or down or neutral the patient must know what you mean patient should be relaxed and patient response is taken as either up down or neutral or the neutral position the examiner holds the proximal phalanx from the sides between the thumb and the index finger and with the other hand he gives three or four uh movements of the ip joint of the great toe and then holds in a particular position now and then ask the patient in which position the thumb is you see this asking the patient which position asking the patient asking the patient asking the patient this is how it is checked now uh, this is just uh, just for the sake of completion that the patient is able to recognize the size shape and weight and the form by holding different objects with his with his eyes closed uh i think the last about the nc is the sensory system is about the vibration and for this uh, tuning for is to be used mostly a 120 degree 128 hertz or maximum 250 uh, 256 hertz tuning for can be used first demonstrate to the patient what is meant by this test by keeping the by stroking the tuning fork and keeping on a bony point which is no, which is normal let the patient understand this is this is most likely to be normal in orthopedic patient 
keep the tuning or keep the uh, stroked tuning fork on the lateral and the clavicle and let the patient know what is meant by vibration and then you can check on the different bony points whether the patient is able to appreciate uh, the vibration of the tuning fork or not and you must compare the two sides if there is a symmetrical uh, paralysis now this is the usual sequence which is seen in uh, seen in our patients once you are examining a patient of a uh, let us say as dorsal spine uh, tuberculosis and examining the uh, sensory loss from above downwards patient will have a normal sensation till a particular level then from a small area it may be a, a particular loss may 50% loss and after that particular and after uh, beyond that area there is a complete loss this is a usual sequence which is found in the orthopedic patient normal above then a uh, reduced sen reduced sensation and then absence of sensations now you must make a note of the bladder and bowel involvement i can't discuss in details but i'll give you a uh, small idea about the uh, things about the bladder i'll not uh, discuss the blood supply but please remember these are the these are the hallmarks of involving the bladder is there any perineal anesthesia whether the patient is able to have voluntary anal contraction whether the great toe flexion is there or not this is called sacral sparing if these three are present this is just in short about the different types of uh, neurological imbalance which can be seen if there is a lesion above t11 there is there is likely to be a spastic bladder the bladder is not bladder is not able to fill and it keeps on uh, discharging quite often while in a case of lesion which is beyond l2 it is a it is a lower motor neuron bladder in which mixed picture from t12 to l1 i think i'll not go into details but please remember that in case of a spinal shock initially when a uh, spinal disease occur a spinal uh, in the spinal shock and all the reflexes are absent as a spinal shock uh, is a spinal shock recovers which is gazed by presence or return of bulbocavernous reflex if the bulbocavernous reflex returns look for whether the voluntary anal contraction is there or not whether the flexion of the great toe is there or not whether the sensation in the perineal is there or not if these are there then the prognosis is good otherwise the prognosis is bad this this is just the same thing well you must do a pr examination as a last part make a note of any bed sore these are different uh, grades of bed sore i am not going to detail starting from just uh, peeling of the skin to the most deep level of the bed sore please make a note of the bed sore uh, then 